Namaskar. Today we are going to study an important principle of Jainism called Anekantvat. Uh, you remember that you know every substance has infinite characteristics, infinite attributes, and all these attributes are not expressed at a time. Only few of them are expressed. So in the reality, all uh, substances have multiple aspects, you know, and all those aspects are expressed uh, either in uh, ones or twos or in, in small groups, but all of them are not expressed. Uh, I explain to you with the help of an example. For example, you are a son uh, to your father, you are a brother to your brother, you are a friend to your friend, you know. So you have a different ident identity, but you are the same person. So, uh, you know, your identity then is defined with reference to somebody, with reference to something or in, in a particular context. Uh, so, uh, but there are no contradictions in these things, you know. Even if, if I call you son, it is okay. If you call you brother, it is okay. I call you as a friend, it is okay. So, but they are all defined in a particular context. So the Nekant view is that it does not accept an incomplete or partial view. You, so you are not only a brother, you are not only a friend, you are not only a son, but probably all of them. So a, in, a partial, complete view is taken here and so that you avoid conflict, you know. So the, one need not fight that, no, you are only son. And the other say, no, no, you are only brother. This kind of conflict and fight is avoided if you take the Nakanth view. Now look here, you are a different identity in different relations. Uh, Anekantvat can be seen easily in our daily life, you know, in conduct of human groups and so on. Uh, life is such that it is it fails to express itself in partial vision. It express, uh, expresses in, in all its completeness, you know, this is what we have to understand. Anekantvad reveals the truth and therefore the truth is that you are a different person in different context. Universe uh, is complete uh, is and comprises infinite realities and a simultaneous view of totality is highly impossible. You can't have a total view. Uh, at the same time. Uh, it's only a partial view which is taken and it's always uh, a partial view or relative view with reference to beliefs, prejudices, mood and so on. You see beliefs also make a lot of uh, conflicts and fights you know. For example you know in Jainism we say look here the soul is a substance and everybody every individual soul is uh, different or separate you know. So every soul has its own identity and a different from another soul. But look at there is another person who can say, no, I believe that the soul is a part of universal soul of Brahma. And there is a third person who can say, no, no, look here, the soul is a divine gift of God. Well, there are different kinds of views, you know, regarding soul. But that should not uh, make you fight among each other or have a conflict or quarrels, you know. There are different views of the same thing and you must accept them. Look here, you live with your belief, I live with my own belief. And you know, there must be a sort of uh, harmony between the different kinds of views. Uh, we understand this uh, with the help of the example. The uh, philosophy or the principle of uh, Anekanth is, uh, is, can be seen on our is, is of practical use in our life, you know. Uh, for example, uh, I say that somebody, somebody makes me angry. Uh, that means, you know, I'm blaming him that he makes me angry. Or suppose I look at a particular object and that I get, I get angry, you know. So I, I, I say that, okay, this particular object makes me angry. Is this correct uh, view of things, you know? 
uh, should I blame those uh, the persons or objects uh, so that they make me angry and they make me unhappy? There is another view uh, that you know. Look here, is it that you know the other people make me angry and they control me? Other objects control me so that I become angry and I become unhappy, or do I control myself? Uh, can I control myself? You know, if I control myself, I refuse to be angry. You know, when somebody is saying something, or when I some objects come to my sight, I refuse to be angry. This is the correct view. You look here. Okay, I mean, you say something, fine. You know, but I refuse to be angry. I refuse to accept your views. I refuse to react to your criticism. This is the right view. So you have a different views, and you must uh, uh, opt or uh, act according to a particular right view. Another example I am giving you. Uh, I believe. Should I believe that uh, my worth is because of my nature, good nature, or human nature, or because of it, my uh, big. and because of my soul you know i think that my soul is pure i don't have any ill will against anybody so should i pay attention to the criticism of others or should i believe in myself or should i evaluate myself on the basis of my body you know i have a strong body or a good body or a handsome body or a beautiful body or i have a good looking features i am intelligent i am skillful I have a lot of money with me. I have a good family. I have good friends. Should these things determine my personality? Or the third view is an ekant view. I do not uh, ignore the criticism of others. Okay, let them say something, but I believe that I am a good person. So his saying does not make me think that I am inferior person. You know, I know my worth, and therefore I believe that okay. whatever he says is okay he let him say i do not bother about it i know i had done nothing wrong and i am a good person so uh, i and i do not evaluate my worth on the basis of my body or money or friends no it is because of my human nature because of my purity of the soul that i evaluate myself so these are the two examples which are of everyday use in our life there is another concept what called as nayavad so anekantvad takes the total view and nayavad takes a partial view of the things you know so it uh, uh, analyzes uh, the objects from a particular point of view or individual point of view uh, human perception and knowledge is limited as i told you and it takes a partial view at a time at a time we take only we know only partial view uh this is nay this is called nay and it deals with a particular aspect of a or a stand point but it does not deny ex- existence of uh, other aspects you know so if i am able to conceive only or perceive only a particular aspect does not mean that other aspects are not present they are also present you know but i am conceiving or i am perceiving only a particular aspect at a time uh, is good example is you know there are seven blind people and uh, they are met to identify an elephant you know so all of them go to the elephant and four of them touch uh, the legs of the elephant one touches the tail one touches touches the trunk another to chase the body and they give different uh, expression different descriptions of the element one said no it's like a pillar another said no it is like a broomstick another we said it's a willowing pen who to chase the ear uh, who to chase the body said it is like a wall well all these descriptions are in fact we know they are correct but they are partially so there is nothing wrong in their statements because they perceive only a particular aspect of the element elephant you know so the naya then is a naya is 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 a, a method of uh, defining a particular object from a particular individual point of view there are two nayas uh, one is a dravyarthik naya 
and uh, one is another is pariyarchik naya. The dravya, the dravyarchik naya refers to general attributes of a substance uh, and not to its modifications. For example, if I had to say that who am I, I can say I am a soul. So this is a general kind of description because you will also that uh, you will also say I am a soul. Everybody, every life, you know, for that matter, is soul. But the pariyarchik naya is that no, no, I am a human being. So that my soul at the moment, at this time, is existing as a human being. At some other time, you know, it can exist in some other form, for example, animal or dev or narki or something like this. So there are two views of defining my identity, dravyarthik na, as, as, as a substance, you know, I am soul. But as a mode or a pariah, I am a human being. This is one way of classifying na. There is another way of classifying na, as a nischa na and vavar na. Nischa na is a transcendental na. It recognizes the real nature of the object. And vavar na recognizes the particular attribute distinguishing the object. Uh, from this point of view, suppose uh, uh, as a nist from the Nishchana point of view, I say that I am a pure soul. And as a pure soul, I cannot act because I am non physical. The soul is non physical, as you know. And a non physical entity cannot do any physical act. And therefore, I am not a doer. I am not doing any act, you know. This is the Nishchana uh, point of view. Then the Vavarna has been in practice, you know, I am, I am doing these activities, I am speaking for example just now, so I am engaged in some kind of activity, so from the practical point of view, I am a doer, I am doing things, you know. So these two different views, now, but uh, that they are not contradictory, they are defined with respect to a particular uh, reference, you know, particular in a particular sense. So normally, if a thing has to be defined in a complete uh, aspect, you know, that the both the, it must be defined from both naya point of view, from both naya, from nischa naya as well as vavar naya. Some of the texts, you know, the renowned texts in Jainism like Samesa and so on, uh, always describe the two naya simultaneously of the soul and the forms of the soul and activities of the soul and so on. It's a good practice and it, 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 it makes the things clear. Naivad is a warning to philosophers, you know. Uh, because the philosophers take different views of the things and they're defined in different ways. But all of them, uh, you know, define the reality in different contexts, that's all. Say for example, uh, the person, you know, suppose there is a sacrifice of the animal. You find this is a common feature in India. And somebody says, oh, this is, you know, my religion. My religion tells me, it is according to my religion, you know, the animal is sacrificed. The another person says, no, no, look here, it is against my religion to sacrifice the animal. So there are different views. And therefore that should not make you fight, you know, and quarrel between you. I mean, one must hold with his own belief and let others also hold their own belief, you know, we also. So uh, that is the kind of situation. Uh, so this is Naivad in brief. The third uh, 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 aspect of <coughs> Anekantvad is Shyadvad. Shyadvad is a synthetic view, you know, Naivad was analytic view. We, we, break the things in parts, you know, from define the things from a particular point of view. Syadvad, you know, we try to synthesize the various views and try to uh, conceive or try to think of a complete reality. So it brings a harmony between different analytical standpoints, you know, you combine them. For example, 
I gave you the example of an elephant in the just now and uh, said that there are seven blind persons and all of them describe the elephant in different, different manner. But I, we who have eyes, you know, can see that now look here, it's uh, the whole elephant, you know. So they are different in different parts of the element. The totality is elephant. So this is synthesis of the different views. So this point of views of seven blind men integrated gives you a picture of whole elephant or whole element, elephant, you know. So Syadvad is uh, a method of integrating different standpoints and different views. Uh, <coughs> Shyadvad should be applied to actual objects, you know, not to imaginary objects or not to those things which are not existing. Uh, let us take an example here. Uh, the Shyadvad is uh, described in seven different uh, predicates or seven different, seven different steps. Whether the thing exists, does not exist or may exist and so on, we'll, we'll go through these steps uh, here. The first step is called Syadasti, maybe is, maybe the thing exists. So take the example of a jar which is made of clay, suppose you have that, then we say jar is made of clay, that is, is, it is existing that the first step is or the first kind of statement which can be made about the jar is that jar is made of clay that is is it exists the second kind of statement which can be made about this jar is syad uh, nasti maybe it is not means the jar is not made of gold so this is another statement, you know. I know that the jar is made of clay. So when I say the siyad nasti, I say that the jar is not made of gold or any other thing, you know, etc. So this is also a description of the jar in order to identify the reality of the jar. Then there can be a siyad asti nasti. Ch maybe is and is not that jar is made of clay and it is not made of gold. There are two statements made now here uh, together. The jar is made of clay and jar is not made of gold. You know. Both are correct and both uh, describe the identity of the jar in a particular manner. Uh, fourth uh, kind of statement which can be made is Shyad avaktavyam. Uh, maybe is inexpressible. So, uh, if I try to say that the jar is uh, made of clay and jar is not made of gold, and these two together simultaneously, I cannot say that. I cannot express this. I had to express them separately that it is made of clay and it is not made of gold. But simultaneously, I cannot say that, you know, it is not uh, clay and it is gold. It is clay and it is not gold. I had to make two different statements, you know. I cannot express it in one statement. See, that, that way, if I try to do that, then I have to say that uh, I can't express it that way, you know. So it is inexpressible. And so, uh, there are other combination of these uh, statements in uh, fifth, sixth and seventh steps, Shyadcha and uh, Avaktyavam, Shyadasticha Avaktyavam, Shyadnasticha Avaktyavam and Shyadasticha Nasticha Avaktyavam. The combination of uh, these first three or four types of statements, you can say that. And the beauty is that you know, to describe any object, these are the only seven kinds of statements that can be made, you know. If you can find eighth, I will be very happy. Though, the eighth kind of statement is not possible, you know. 
So uh, the Jain scholars, the ancient Jain scholars, you know, devised ways to describe the thing particularly in whole detail in a seven kinds of statement. Okay, and this has a large number of applications now also in uh, modern mathematics, you know, in statistical theories, in the probability theory and so on. I am not going to go into details of uh, these applications here, but suffice it to say that, you know, uh, Jain scholars uh, were very clear how to identify a particular object or a thing in all its aspects, you know, and make a complete statement regarding the object. So, uh, what we have studied today is Anekantvad, uh, the multi-aspect philosophy is very important, you know, it uh, reconciles conflicts between different views in the world, you know. So most of the fights in the world or the war which have been fought uh, are because of difference of views and they were they are not able they were not able to reconcile them you know and therefore they fought the war and if there is an, an effort to understand each other each and each and uh, each other's point of view and uh, come to some kind of agreement or reconciliation look here you are correct in your own ways and i am correct in my own ways and why fight so if that that kind of uh, thing or uh, approach is brought about by an ekantvad it's very important it can solve most of the problems which are existing in the world and these problems exist only because of the differences in view which should not create any kind of conflict uh, in, in principle then we also discuss nayava you know i mean you analyze the thing in parts and describe each part in relation to something in contrast to something and uh, that also uh, that approach is also very helpful to understand reality and then the siyadva the third aspect where we try to describe a thing in all its aspects by seven kind, different kinds of statement you know make a seven different kinds of statement and then you with that you describe or identify your object completely or perfectly you know. uh, so i'll stop here uh, that uh, and uh, i i would like that you study these uh, principles in your life and try to find out examples and identify examples of anekantvad and nayavad and also shyadvad and satisfy yourself that these are the principles which are so helpful to us thank you very much